Welcome back everyone to my stock market weekly update series, which I post every Saturday. And in this week's episode, we're talking all about earnings because we just received some major reports from some giants like Tesla, Netflix, Verizon, and more. And we're gonna cover each of them in today's video. We're also gonna take a look as always at how the market performed for the week. And we'll also talk about the biggest gainers and losers. And I'll let you know if anything catches my eye for investment as well. It's gonna be a fun one. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. All right, guys, and starting here with a quick look at the markets, we actually saw a big bounce back this week after seeing so much selling in prior weeks, with the Dow Jones now climbing by almost 5%, the S&P 500 climbing by about the same amount, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq seeing the biggest rally of the three with over a 5% gain. From their highs though, the S&P 500 is still well inside a bear market, down over 22%, while the Nasdaq is down even more at over a 33% crash. With that said though, it was still a very strong week for the markets, which is going to bring us now to the market news part of the video. And apart from some pretty solid earnings overall, which we will cover in just a second, one of the other drivers for the week actually came from the Fed as officials have been expressing some concerns about them raising interest rates maybe a little too quickly. Of course, one of the biggest reasons why the stock market has been crashing so much this year is because we've been raising interest rates at a very fast pace, which we all know can crash the economy if you do it too quickly and send us into recession. So the Fed now seems to be rethinking their stance a little, given that rates are higher right now than really any other point since the Great Recession. And so the market is kind of pricing in the chance here that they may slow down a little on those rate hikes. Although in my opinion, I think they're still going to throw anything they can at inflation. So I doubt we'll see rates cool off anytime soon. But again, all lies this week were really on earnings. So let's spend more time talking about that instead. And I'll run through some of the bigger ones that caught my eye. Starting with Monday though, we had big banks continuing their strong performance because of rising interest rates that are making their loans more lucrative as Bank of America beat on both the top and bottom line, sending their stock soaring by over 10% for the week. As you guys know, the only bank stock that I own myself is JP Morgan Chase, who also beat estimates last week, which sent it climbing by over 5%, and this week it climbed by another 10% too, thanks to the rally from Bank of America, so I was happy to see those gains on my stock as well. Moving on to uh, Tuesday though, one of the most popular stocks to report earnings this week was the video streaming giant Netflix, who managed to not only beat on both the top and bottom line, but they also added over 2.4 million subscribers this quarter, which was more than double what they had forecasted. Up to this point, Netflix stock had been crashing for some time due to a slowdown of growth, so the surprising good news sent it soaring by over 25% this week, although it is still down by almost 60% from its high in a pretty big crash. I personally have never owned any Netflix stock myself though because of the rich valuation as well as the rising threat of competitors entering the market, especially Disney, who has already surpassed them in total subscribers. And I already own them as well as Amazon and even Apple who are direct competitors. And I just think that all of those companies are much better and more diversified to invest in long term. Tuesday also had Johnson & Johnson report though, which is one of the world's largest pharmaceutical and just kind of consumer staple in general type of companies. And while I do not own the stock myself, they have always been high up on my watch list because of their strong brands, massive size and financials, and super attractive dividend that yields close to 3% with a good payout ratio below 50% and a monumental growth history of almost six decades in a row. This quarter was also strong for them as they beat on both the top and bottom line, but the response from Wall Street was a bit more muted than others as it only climbed by a couple percentage points for the week. Overall, J&J continues to be a very slow moving stock, only being up less than 20% in the past five years, but a big part of that is due to lawsuits and other negative press, that I do think will eventually dissipate. So long term, I feel that this is still a very solid dividend stock to consider at these lower prices. Moving on to Wednesday though, all eyes were definitely on the almighty Tesla, who was actually doing 
uh, well going into the earnings because they had climbed by 7% on Monday, but then those earnings came out on Wednesday in after hours trading and it just got crushed the next day with over a 6.5% drop. It did bounce back a little on Friday though, which left it ending the week still up by almost 5% but the volatility came from a miss on revenue as well as analysts complaining about the earnings call. But overall, I actually thought their earnings looked really good. First of all, Tesla only missed revenue by a little bit at 21.45 billion versus 21.96 expected, which was still a giant 56% increase year over year. I mean, how many other car companies out there are growing by that same rate? Plus the real story should be on their profits where they not only beat estimates, but their net income more than doubled year over year. That's crazy. And especially for an automaker. And all the meanwhile, their already super high vehicle margins are still remaining strong at close to 30%. That's like three times the margins of other legacy automakers where it's not even close. Plus the reason why analysts didn't like the earnings call, at least in my opinion, is mostly because they just don't like Elon Musk in general while also having underperform ratings on Tesla stock. So they really wanted it to go down, you know, I would say as usual, like media analysts, they usually want Tesla stock to go down for many reasons that we don't have time to cover in this video. But I feel like everything Musk said during the earnings call was actually true. He mentioned the superior margins and incredible demand, saying that they're literally delivering every single car they can make. And that's despite all the rising competition and higher price tags, which to be honest, Tesla's one of my biggest holdings and I'm very concerned about the competition and the higher prices as well but at this point this stock is down close to 50% from its highs and it's starting to look pretty attractive again which by the way that's exactly how Elon Musk feels because he also stated during the earnings call that Tesla stock is too cheap right now and they're trying to get 10 billion dollars approved for buying back their own stock because of it he even went as far as to say that Tesla could one day be worth more than Apple, which is of course a $2 trillion market cap company. I wouldn't go anywhere near that far myself to make that claim, but I like the confidence nonetheless. For Thursday though, the biggest reports seem to come from American Airlines and AT&T, which both performed really well. American Airlines beat on both the top and bottom line thanks to stronger travel demand as we move past the pandemic, which is helping offset the really high fuel prices that we have right now. And it sent the stock climbing by almost 5% for the week, while AT&T also beat on both the top and bottom line, sending, sending the stock soaring by almost 15% for the week thanks to higher subscribers subscriber growth than expected. Unfortunately, their rival in Verizon though, it was the complete opposite story when they reported earnings the next day on Friday as the stock fell by another 3% after reporting weaker subscriber growth than expected, which is likely due to them raising prices on their already costly plans. I happen to own Verizon stock though, and given that it's now trading at an 11 year low with a rising dividend that is higher than any other point in its history, including the Great Recession with over a 7% yield and almost two decades of consecutive growth, I think the stock is a screaming buy right now and I'll be loading up on more shares myself. That's going to do it though for this week's major earnings reports, but make sure you don't miss next week's episode because we got some more giants reporting like Amazon, Google, and Apple. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be next Saturday. But with that said, let's go ahead and finish up today's video with the biggest gainers and losers for the week. And when looking at the large cap gainers, there was actually a ton of stocks this week that I really like, but the best performer was Netflix at over a 23% gain, which we talked about earlier. I'm not personally a fan of that one. And there was also Roblox at a 20% gain, which is a super volatile video game stock that I'm also not very interested in either. But then you had some awesome stocks climbing like Twilio and Cloudflare, for example, which were actually on last week's worst performing list, where I mentioned that I was tempted to buy them because their stocks had fallen by so much. But unfortunately, I didn't make any move on those stocks and they proceeded to shoot up this week by over 17 and 16% respectively. 
There are a couple of speculative tech stocks though, so not everyone will be interested in these, but I think they have some really interesting businesses with Twilio being a cloud-based communications company that helps businesses integrate chat, voice, and video communications into their platforms, while Cloudflare is one of the fastest cloud service providers in areas of network, security, and application services that helps other businesses with their operations. And sales are super high growth for both companies, but as you can see, profits have been a real struggle despite that with growing losses every year. I put Twilio's financials on the left here and then CF is on the right and you can see how they look almost identical. But in the current rising rate environment, unprofitable tech stocks like this have been getting crushed all year long with Twilio down over 70% year to date and CF down almost 60% as well, even after this week's bounce and a lot more from their highs too. So I'm gonna keep tracking these ones and let you know if I ever decide to make a move on them, but so far I have not made any purchases. Other than that though, I noticed that Intuitive Surgical climbed this week, which is one of my favorite plays on the future of robotic surgeries, but I actually, actually like Medtronic more since they pay a super nice dividend of over 3%, although I still don't own either stock myself, but I might consider buying Medtronic in the future because it's currently going through a huge dip in the price and I think that dividend is getting really attractive as well. Speaking of dividends though, we also saw a couple of other great dividend stocks climb this week with Lockheed Martin and Lamb Research rallying by over 15% each. Now Lamb is a semiconductor company that supplies the machinery and software for building chips, which I think is a very high demand market that will always be around. And while their dividend is a little small at less than a 2% yield, it's got some fantastic growth metrics on it that I think is worth considering. Lockheed is also a super high demand business as they are one of the biggest defense companies in the entire world that makes weapons and vehicles for air, land, sea, and even space. And their dividend yield is over 2.6% with also some super nice growth metrics on it as well. Unfortunately for me though, the stock rarely dips and is currently trading near an all time high. So I just feel like I never find a good entry point into the stock since I mostly enjoy buying the majority of my stocks when they're going down rather than up. Speaking of which though, that brings us now to the biggest losers that dropped the most this week, but unfortunately there really wasn't anything on here that even remotely caught my attention or, or made me interested in. Uh, most of the declines really came from smaller financial stocks that I never invest in. Again, the only bank stock I've ever owned is JP Morgan Chase, and I feel like that gives me more than enough exposure to financials. But then in terms of popularity, I think really the only stocks on here that anyone would even recognize are probably Snapchat and Albertsons, who fell by over 20% each. In Snapchat's case, they've been struggling to put up high growth because of all the competition in social media from giants like Meta, Google, and TikTok. And this past week, they reported earnings, which saw revenue climb by only 6%, which is the first time that their growth has dipped down into the single digits ever since... Uh, going public back in t t uh, 2017. And they also announced that they're cutting 20% of their staff, despite also announcing a half a billion dollar share buyback program because of the falling stock price, which is now down over 80% just this year alone. I know some people are buying the stock now because it's fallen by so much, but I already own Meta and Google, which give me plenty of exposure to social media, so I don't have any interest in risking money on Snapchat. Albertsons, on the other hand, is a um, grocery retailer, and they actually reported some strong earnings, but the reason why it fell had really nothing to do with their earnings. It was actually because they were paying a special dividend that expired this week, so the stock just corrected down by that same amount. By the way, Albertsons is now being acquired by Kroger, who's another uh, grocery retailer, bigger one, which pays a very solid growth-oriented dividend that yields 2.4% with a low payout ratio and a high growth rate and growth history. However, the retail grocery business is a little too boring for me personally, and the stock is also a slow mover, so I've never purchased the stock, but I can definitely see why others like to own it long term. I think it's a solid choice for certain dividend investors. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below. How do you feel about anything that we talked about in today's video? Let me know what stocks you're invested in. I'll respond to your comments too, and we'll have some fun. But thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. 
Take care. Bye-bye.